Good morning. This is Pastor Amos C. Brown, Senior Pastor of the Historic Third Baptist Church of San Francisco, California. We are very pleased and consider it a great privilege to greet you this morning and welcome you to our live stream service emanating from Third Baptist located at 1399 McAllister Street here in the city and county of San Francisco, California. This worship service on this Lord's Day is dedicated to the sacred memory and incredible legacy of two iconic, fearless, principled, loving giants of the movement for civil and human rights in this nation. Dr. C.T. Vivian and the Honorable Dr. John Lewis who walked the path of service that Jesus did tread during his journey in this earth. These two servants of the people were world citizens, a never provincial pedestrian, a localized nationalist, for they realized that Jesus of Nazareth died for the world and that God sent God's Son to this world that whosoever believeth in his way his truths his example and his model would experience and share for others the abundant life with the hope of life eternal and we have in the sanctuary today the backdrop of a poster presenting those iconic men. C.T. Vivian, who was arrested as a freedom rider along with John Lewis in my native state of we were both engaged. We laid before the world our very bodies as a testament to the fact that we had to serve the present age, which was our calling to fulfill. And these two giants, these two giants, fulfilled their master's will. So let us all rise and join in singing the opening hymn of the morning. Come by fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Let us join in singing with one heart, mind, and spirit. Come thy fount of every blessing. Thank you. 
us pray. God, we thank you that you are our rock, our shield, and our Ebenezer. And hither by thy help have we come this day to worship you in spirit and in truth. And as we share our gratitude to you, O oh God, help us also to be grateful for those who have been partners and fellow workers with you in the struggle for justice, for peace, for social betterment, and for enlightenment. Help us, God, to know that we will never safely get to our destiny that thou hast ordained for us unless we see others and never just ourselves. Help us to know, O oh God, never will we be the great nation that we should be unless we enable every citizen to experience quality education, that they may know their history and the history of humankind, that they may know how to pursue those scientific measures that will enable us to experience good health, safety, security, and may we know that you only bless a nation whose God is the Lord, the one Lord who orders of us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk on with thee. Bless us in this service today, that as we invoke the names and the legacies of John Lewis and C.T. Vivian, our remembrances our calling their names will be more than just idle words, but that we shall truly honor their legacy by doing everything that we can and should be doing to reach out and touch somebody with our understanding and our love, to reach out and lift someone as we climb to reach out, O oh God, to this global village and stop division. But we shall be indeed a beloved community that Dr. King taught John Lewis and C.T. Vivian and yours truly to make a reality in this world. This is our prayer we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we present our singers who will render the selection today right up in the chariot. Oh, you get done, mother. 
Lord has promised you. But you must live right, follow his word, and I know he'll see. I'm crying, oh Lord, have a mercy on me. Oh Lord, have a mercy on me. Oh Lord, have a mercy on me. And I hope I'll join the band. Gonna talk to Master Jesus, so I am a born. I'll with Master Jesus. Stream audience say amen wherever you may be. And now we turn to our time of prayer and meditation. And as our minister of music, Reverend Smith, plays, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. Oh, there's not one like Jesus. Jesus knows all about our struggles and will guide until the day is done. So let us Reaffirm the fact that there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. John Lewis, C.T. Vivian, Martin Luther King Jr., Ralph Abernathy, Jesse Jackson, faced dogs. by Billy Club. How did they do it? Because they had a friend in Jesus. And they followed Jesus' example of being with the disinherited. Of leading poor people's campaigns. As freedom riders throughout the South in a nation in which everyone was promised life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But that promise was not to include black folks, Native Americans, women, and even immigrants from certain countries. Let us thank God today as we pray that they passed the test. They fought a good fight. They kept the faith. They finished their course of never being violent, of never being unprincipled, of never just making it a black civil rights movement, but it was a movement for human rights. Movement that gay rights were built on. A movement that women's rights were built on. A movement that rights for the handicapped were built on. So let us thank God John Lewis and C.D. Vivian knew Jesus. So let us all stand in honor of them, reverencing their great work. 
by joining and singing the hymn for our prayer time.
deserved an admirable and wonderful tenure as minister music in this church. Let us thank God for his sister, all the members of the family. And again, especially do we invite you to pray for the families of John Lewis and C.T. Vivian. Let us continue to pray for the family of J.C. Young. That young six-year-old lad who lost his life to senseless violence on the 4th of July. Come and pray for the sick, the bereaved, and the shut in. Judge Phillips, pray for us. Oh, gracious and eternal God, our Father. Here it is once again that we come before you, thanking you for once again allowing us to come into your divine presence. Oh God, we praise you, we magnify you for the lives led by John Lewis and Dr. C.T. Vivian. And, oh God, all those forerunners, and we know that they're now sitting at the welcome table with those forerunners such as Ida B. Wells, Medgar, Martin, and many, many others. We know that we stand on their shoulders in so many, many ways for the pathways that they cut for so many people, not just black, not just brown, but for all people. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We come knowing that we're just tent dwellers passing through this wicked land. And Lord, we know that as we move from place to place, we ask that you would be with us all the way. And oh God, we know that you promised to be with us all the way, even to the end. But now, Lord, we still have some challenges down here. But before we go too far, we're going to ask that you forgive us of all our sins, excuse our faults and our failures, overlook our shortcomings. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for being a forgiving God. We know you're able. We know you're able because what you've done for us all down through the years, you have mighty, mighty God. You brought us up through slavery, reconstruction, Affirmative action, civil rights, and sometimes no rights, sometimes a shortage of rights. But we praise you anyway, for we know that you're still able to bring us all the way. Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much we just can't tell it all. If we had 10,000 dollars, they'd be insufficient to praise your holy name. Now, Lord, we ask that you strengthen our pastor. When he comes forward with the message of the morning, let it be a transforming message that will change the lives of many. Let them come running, asking the question, what shall I do to be saved? Lord, we want to ask now that you bless this church in a mighty, mighty way. Oh God, we know that you know all about us. Many are sick and many are shut in. The names have been called, but you, Lord, you know them, even without their names being called. You know just where they are. You know just what they need, for you said you know all our needs, even while we're yet asking and yet calling. We call on your mighty name this day, asking that you send the peace spirit over all that land. Let the people not be worried about what number 45 is going to do, but let them keep their mind stayed on you, for you promised to keep us in perfect peace. Put their minds on voting, put their minds on doing whatever they can to free people. Lord, we want to thank you now. Bless this church in a mighty, mighty way. Oh, God, send blessing after blessing. For we know that we live under an open heaven. You've got all things in your hand. Bless your people, we pray now. In the precious and mighty name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Amen. All right. Let's say amen. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. God bless you. Say amen for our live stream audience. Amen. I'm sure that after having heard that selection, wherever they are viewing our services, they have no doubts. Oh, yeah. Some are doubting themselves. Some are doubting our government. Others are doubting whether or not this very virus will cease. But we have no doubt that there will be healing on the way. We have no doubt that if God was with us in days gone by, when hope unborn had died, yet if we have certitude and hope for a bright future and we kept on the journey toward freedom and fulfillment. Now as we prepare to share with you an appeal coming from Brother Preston Turner, permit me to say that as we think of giving, as we think of how many friends have invested in our ministries because they saw us about like Nehemiah, a great work and that this institution has never come down from the wall of social justice of an inclusionary sociology welcoming everybody to this fellowship of an enlightened people who are using their resources not only for praise of God but more importantly for the education the enlightenment and the cultural celebration of all peoples and we are standing on that legacy and that's why we have in this pulpit this day these two iconic brothers who we should all before our children and our children's children. And right now on this poster here, I'm viewing that image of C.T. Bigman, who on May the 24th board trailway from Montgomery to Jackson met violence. I also see one John Lewis was also aboard that bus. And there is also Bernard Lafayette Since 1852, 
been true to our God, true to our native land, but true to the liberation of all people. Pastor, good morning to our live stream audience, to our members, our friends across this nation. And yes, we do mourn the spirit of a good friend, world figure, John Lewis, C.T. Vivian. John Lewis, a graduate of Fisk yes, yes, University, yes, yes. class of 1967. Yes. Preston Turner, graduate of Fisk University, class of 1977. Amen. We're just so good to be here and just so thankful for our church, our legacy, our pastor, his leadership, his spirit, and Third Baptist Church since 1852. Still a beacon in this city, in this state, and throughout this world. You know, the song says, and let me just go back and say, as the pastor said earlier, this is giving time, and this is why we're here to say it is giving time. And as the song says, the more you give, the more he gives to you. But keep on giving because it's really true that you can't be God's giving. No matter how hard you try. The more you give, the more he gives to you. But keep on giving because it's really true that you can't, you can't be God's giving. Because no matter how hard you try. So Third Baptist, Keep on giving. Our friends across this land, keep on giving. Third Baptist, keep on giving. Keep on tolling on. We appreciate you. We just thank you. You know, just this past Sunday and for the last couple months, We've had members demonstrating that. We've had corporations demonstrating that. We had other faith institutions demonstrating just that. Quick story. This podium mic right here. We had a family that came forward and we will have a new podium mic that will help us with our connectivity, with our sound production. You know, I can just tell you that technology is not cheap. And they came forth and said, Brother Turner, Brother Pastor, Third Baptist, we're gonna support our church and we're gonna make sure that we have better sound production coming from this pulpit so soon and very soon that will be here it will be installed and we thank that family we had another family came forth during this week and said I heard so much about what you're doing with your live stream with your 
connectivity with your technology and you know Apple products are not cheap I received that envelope during the week and we thank them for that and then we have as I said faith institutions outside of Third Baptist and we have two brand new cameras coming in and more technology that they are supporting us it keeps coming just remember the more you give so we petition you Third Baptist as we're in this pandemic and we don't know when and we're not going to get used to it but what we're used to is Third Baptist continuing to give continue to support this ministry this community we're just so thankful for you you know there are many many ways that you can give you can go online and you can give through Givelify and PayPal and you can even give your credit card online but you can also call and yes you can call 415-346-4426 our new connection because of our new connection with Comcast our technology is growing y'all you must push one first then 214 Again, that's 415-346-4426, extension 1214. And you can't beat snail mail. You just can't beat it. Send your checks, send your donations to 1399 McAllister Street, right here in San Francisco, 94115. That's Third Baptist Church, 1399 McAllister Street, right here in San Francisco, 94115. Keep on giving. Keep on helping us. Keep on helping us help somebody. And remember, be safe, wash your hands, and make sure you have your face covering. God bless you.
Verses 28 through 32. And it reads on this wise. One of the scribes approached. When he heard them debating. And saw that Jesus answered them well. He asked him, which command is the most important of all? This is the most important, Jesus answered. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have correctly said that he is one. And there is no one else except him. And to love him with all your heart with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is far more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord.
just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart. It's gratefulness.
Leviticus, the 19th chapter, the handbook for the ancient Jewish community, the rule book, the law code. measure that governs conduct says this beginning at the 17th verse Leviticus 19 beginning at verse 17 you must not harbor hatred against your brother or sister rebuke your neighbor directly and you will not incur guilt because of him or her. Do not take revenge or bear a grudge against members of your community. But love your neighbor as yourself. You are to keep my statute. You must not crossbreed two kinds of livestock. Sow your fields with two kinds of seed. Put on a garment made of two kinds of material. But in the New Testament, Jesus' book in which he says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law and the prophets. For I have come that the law and the prophets might be fulfilled. Yes, yes. How does Jesus give that fulfilling touch? does it in Mark chapter 12 beginning at verse 20 one of the scribes approached when he heard them debating and saw that Jesus answered them well he asked him which command is the most important of all this is the most important, Jesus answered. Listen, Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command, no other command is greater than these. And from these two passages that I want to talk for the next little while on this subject, the other the other, the other. We are fastly approaching the 2020 census since concluding. I might say it parenthetically, if you did not get involved in the count, you've shortchanged yourself. You have potentially cut yourself off from not being included in 
the other and overlook, left behind, blocked out, and not being considered. You've seen that form, government forms, where they ask you for your racial or ethnic identity, white, black, Asian. You've seen it, Native American, and there's a form that says, are oh, other. And when you look deeply, Reverend C. Smith, at that notion of other, it's not just giving you an opportunity, place your identity there. It also can become an occasion, a statement, an opportunity for you to be listed as the other, suggesting you're not to be reckoned with, you're underserved, you're not in the in crowd, you are not seen as being visible, you are just the other. Not in the privileged class, not with the opulent people who live in settings in which they have more than their share of the goods of God's good earth. It was in 1962 when I was sitting at the feet of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. along with Julian Bond and six others, that we studied the idea of the notion of personalism, a philosophical, theological idea that was coined by one John Brightman up at Boston University. Brightman's idea, Brightman's notion was that every human being, regardless of how different he or she might be, every person was deserving of respect and was imbued by the Agnus Dei of the divine imprint from God created in the image of God and that we were to respect, I repeat, all human beings. That notion haunted, followed, pricked the conscience of all of us students. Don't ever see any human being as being the other, quote unquote. Also, in 1962, Sister Knockham, there was one named Michael Harrington who wrote a book entitled The Other America. The Other America. Little did we know, Judge Phillips, that Dr. King's idea of personalism and Harrington writing that book, The Other America, was preparing the foundation, the groundwork for Dr. Martin Luther King's Poor People's Campaign that was to eventuate or to happen in the 60s before he was unfortunately assassinated. This lesson today should arrest our attention because as we invoke the names of 
John Lewis, and C.T. Vivian. These men were not out there marching, riding on buses, cause they needed exercise, per se, but they were guided by, they were challenged by the teachings of Dr. King that in this life, we have a moral obligation to see the other, yes. the other America. Why? Because in 1962, there were 40 million poor people in this nation. 40 million. And you would have thought that by now, in 2020, I said you would have thought that by now in 2020, we would have come to see the other. But we haven't changed that much. We are still marking time. We are still in the status quo. And we have, according to recent findings in 2020, still 40 million poor folk in America. Why are we in this state? Because, as it was stated in my text that I read this morning, there are some folks who want to only engage in what I call, and others call in the movement, a paralysis of an analysis. They will do a whole lot of disputing, a whole lot of debates, get engaged in a whole lot of studies. You ever been in a church meeting where the pastor was trying to get an idea off the ground for the good of the people? There's always going to be somebody who would say, well, I don't know, let me study this. Well, you believe there was no study that was going to be of value and substance. That would mean I'm going to get myself in a corner with my cronies and I'm going to sit on the map. America has studied black folks. Help me somebody. Well, We've had the Kerner Commission study. Yeah. We had that Garner Murdoch American Dilemma over 70 years ago. Study after study. Study following the Los Angeles riots in the 60s. Studies following that man, hacker up at Columbia University, who wrote that book, A Divided Nation, Hostile, Unequal. But still we are doing studies. Still we are doing analysis. They talk about having now a study or an analysis of reparation. Mm -hmm. A commission is being talked about, debated, disputed in the House of Representatives right now. Well intentioned, good idea to do some planning and do some analysis. But there comes a time in the life of our nation there comes a period in every family and in every church when we ought to stop quibbling, engaging in Tweedly D and Tweedly Dumb. We ought to stop analyzing and get up and do something. Help me somebody. That's the reason why Jesus said to the lawyer who was only wanting to argue with him and debate with him, you know what the law said. You know what it said in Leviticus. That you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. But here's where the rubber hits the road. And you shall love thy neighbor as thyself. You got to love others as you would like to be loved. You should love others as you want to be experienced love yourself. Help me somebody. God wants us in this nation right now to see the other, somebody else besides yourself. That's the reason why I like that old great poem that goes, Lord, help me to live from day to day in such a self-forgetful way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayers shall be for others. 
Others, Lord, yes, others. Let this my motto be. Help me to live for others that I may live like thee. Help me in all the work I do to ever be sincere and true and know that I, all I do for you must needs be done for others. Let self be crucified and slain and buried deep all in vain. May efforts be to rise again unless to live for others. And when my work on earth is done and my new work in heaven's begun, may I forget the crown I've won while thinking still of others. Lord, others. Yeah. Lord, others. I heard Eugene Dare through the history book saying, from a jail down there in Atlanta, Georgia, as long as there is a lower class, I'm in it. As long as there are poor people, I'm with them. As long as I see someone else, Eugene Debs says, who's not receiving his meal, I am with the oppressed. God spoke through a man who was called a socialist, but God bless my soul, I thank God that in the early church, they know who I knew how to look out for others. For the Bible says, when the church was born, they had all things in common and they served each other's needs. You know what the record says, that there was a man named Barnabas who sold a field and he brought a portion of the proceeds in order that he might help others. But America needs to see the other. Christianity in this nation needs to see the other. And really, Jesus gave us the law, but we have violated the law. Well. We've not kept the law. And we ought to be locked up. We ought to be locked up, I said. We ought to be locked up for violating the law. Help me, somebody. Mm. Lock them up like we lock up young folks in the hood. Mm. Lock them up like we lock up people who are black and for the least crime that may be committed. Lock them up. If you lock up black folks, we ought to have a lockup of racist folk in America. Help me, somebody. We ought to lock up folks who go to church on Sunday morning claiming they love God, but they won't let a black person come in and worship or hold a position in the church. We ought to lock them up. They are violating. They ought to be arrested for malpractice. Check me, somebody. For they have violated the law. They ought to be sued for violating the law of God because God said, love everybody. Love your neighbor as you would be Interested in being loved by others yourself. Let me slow this train down and say here this morning, making it plain here that there is a violation of this other category for everybody. It was some years ago that Dr. Samuel D. Witt Proctor, that great man who was possibly the last of the great schoolmasters, along with Benjamin Elijah Mays. He was over the poverty program in the New England states of America during the days of Lyndon Bain Johnson. One day, one day, President Johnson called on Sam Proctor and said to him, Sam, I want you to get on the plane and go down to D.C and meet Billy Graham. He said, I'm busy trying to do something for these poor people in America. That's a part of that 40 million back then. And he said, I want to feed these poor people. I want to clothe them and I want to educate them. He said, get on the plane, go down to Washington and meet Billy Graham. Dr. Proctor, went down to Washington 
And this is told, y'all, in his book, The Substance of Things, Hope For. And he said he met Dr. Graham. And they went on down to Montreal, North Carolina, way up there on the mountain. They went up high. A, a delicious, delicious meal was prepared. And Dr. Proctor said, after they had finished eating, uh, Billy Graham said to him, you know our um, uh, worker here, Mary, is just like a member of the family. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. Proctor said, he said to himself, well, if she's a member of the family, why can't we sit at the table and eat together? And so after he said that to himself, he got around to saying to Billy Graham, well, President Johnson wants you to help him with his poverty program. He doesn't want you to do any demonstration. He just wants you to, to say a word for his program. So Billy Graham, and I say this respectfully, y'all, but I'm just telling the truth. And I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Billy Graham said to Dr. Proctor, well, Dr. Proctor, I can't do that. And he said to him, why, Dr. Graham? He said, because I don't feel that you can eradicate or get rid of poverty by a poverty program or through legislation of government. I feel we got to bring folks to Jesus and save their soul. And so Dr. Proctor said he didn't try to change Billy Graham's mind. And Billy Graham didn't change his mind. But Dr. Proctor said he left that mountaintop, went down to the valley depressed, thinking that he is one, the leader of the evangelical movement in America, who doesn't live like, who doesn't preach like he knows, that Jesus of Nazareth did feed the hungry. For the Bible does say that there was a time when there were 5,000 people who were hungry. But before Jesus opened his mouth to start talking or preaching, he fed the folks. And after he saw there a little boy who had five barley loaves and two little fish, Jesus stood there and he said, I'm going to show how you can multiply a little boy's lunch if you would just see my principle of loving everybody with your heart, soul, and mind. And the Bible says that the little boy's lunch was taken from Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus, after he got the bread and he got the little fish that his mother had given him, he prayed to God and God multiplied the fish and the loaves. Help me somebody. And how did they multiply? Some may talk of it was a literal miracle, but other theologians say it wasn't just that, but you ought to consider that when you are an example of seeing the other person who doesn't have anything and you would share what you have and somebody will be inspired so much so that the whole neighborhood, the whole family, the whole nation will have enough to eat and some to spare. Lord, I feel all right. When I was down in Mississippi, my mama, Luella Brown, never would cook a meal and not remember somebody around Jackson who needed somebody to bring them some bread to eat. Somebody always had on their minds another person who didn't have all of life's blessings and life substance. And if you didn't have anything to give, if somebody gave you a mess of greens and you didn't just eat those greens and forget about the blessing that you got, but they would always clean out the pot and put a chip in the pot. And when they put the chip in the pot, it says you were somebody there for me. I was the other and you fed me, you clothed me, you visited me. And when you are in need, the chip means I'm gonna be there 
for you and I'm going to do something to help somebody. I thank God this morning that John Lewis Chapman, yeah. C.T. Vivian, yeah. they put the chip in the bucket yeah. riding on freedom trains, yeah. riding on buses. Yes, they put the chip in the bucket moving throughout the land, blessing us, opening doors at school. John Lewis didn't have a selfish bone in his body. He was always saying, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can bring back beauty to a world once wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can teach the master's message as the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for John Lewis. Thank you for Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you for Jesse Jackson. Thank you, oh God, for Rap Abernathy. Thank you for the preachers who knew how to see the other, that others might be blessed. Others might be encouraged. Others might be helped through life's journey. Others might be helped to get over life's struggle. Thanks be to God. And after a while, soon and very soon, when it's all over down here, when we serve God, when we fought a good fight, when we kept the faith, when we finish our course, He's going to say, Our God will say, Come on up higher. Come on up higher. You fed the hungry. You clothed the naked. Come up higher. You gave a glass of water in my name. Come up higher. You visited those in prison. Come on up higher. You saw the other. And because you saw them, I see you now. Come on now. Sit down and rest a little while. I don't know about you, but soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. I'm going to see the king. Soon and very soon. It will all be over. But I want to hear him say, not Amos Brown. Uh -huh. Not a, but, but with a doctor degree. I don't want nobody talking about where I went to school. I want to be able to say, I fed the hungry. I clothed the naked. I tried to help educate our children. I tried to see our seniors across the street. I tried to make sure black folks got their fair share of COVID-19 tests. I tried. Because I saw the other, the other, the other. Lord, help me that I may live. That when I kneel in prayer, my prayer shall be for others. Touch somebody with your life. Touch somebody's life with your goodness. You'll be surprised, very surprised. That that same touch, that same touch will come back to you. Yes. Give and it shall be given to you. Yes. Press down, shaken together, running over unto eternal life. Thanks be to God. Jesus showed us if you would keep the old law and not be arrested for malpractice. If you would keep the whole law of loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy strength, and with all thy soul. He shall say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You saw the other, the other America, the other who was overlooked. We want to open the doors of the church to see if there's a boy, girl, man, or woman who in your spirituality, who in your religiosity, who in all of your social doings have failed to see the other. But inadvertently many of us have only looked to the privilege. Those who are in certain classes, those are in certain races. But I say to you this day, the law says, the mandate from heaven says, you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. You shall love thy neighbor 
as our chef. And who is that neighbor? The other. Who is that neighbor? The other who you refuse to speak to. Who is that other? That person who you refuse to connect with because they had been in prison. But Jesus said, I came to set the captives free. I came to deliver the others. God bless you today. That's my sermon. Thanks be to God that Brother John and Brother C.T. were about the business of seeing others. And we want to open the doors to you wherever you are. You may call into Third Baptist 415. 346 4426 extension 210 and we shall be there to answer your call whenever you call let us remember Cardi Tyndale Vivian that's what CT means God bless you. A good name, Cardi Tyndale. Pulling people together. Seeing the other. God bless you, John Lewis. Thank you for marching to that bridge. And now today, the very voting right that they're trying to take away from us. You laid the groundwork for it because you saw the other. And as a choir, the, our singers, members of our choir, continue to sing. I invite you to come on up to higher ground. Don't stay in the battle of selfishness, egocentricity, racism, materialism, nationalism. Come on up to communitarianism, which we build a community of love and togetherness where we see the other. Lord, plant thy feet on high. Or sing on, singers. Lord, let me up. Lord, let me up.
you for this mountaintop moment that thou hast permitted us to experience. And we beg of you that we would not commit malpractice of our faith. That we will not be like the disciples who were on the mountain of transfiguration. Peter said, it's good for us to be here. Let us build three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. God help us to be used by you to leave the mountain and go down in the valley where we shall see the other, the other America, the other person in our family, the other person in our church who has been looked over, left behind, locked out, and been considered not present. Save us, God, from our selfishness. Deliver this nation from its nationalism. Help us, oh God, to understand that we live in a world community. This is your world. Though we may be different, different religions, different races, but we've got to come together, stop our divisiveness and our separate ways. But see the other America. See the other person. And in doing that, we too shall be qualified for restitution, reconciliation, to sit in your kingdom where every day will be Sunday and the Sabbath shall have no end. This is our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.